Welcome to the widescreen week in review for the first and second weeks of August 2016. We're going to start off with Dangerous Golf. It's a sports arcade action title from Three Fields Entertainment. It was recently released in June of 2016. It gets gold for widescreen and 4K Ultra HD, silver for Multimon and limited for Ultra Wide. Ultra Wide and Multimon are natively vert minus. There's an I and I edit that increases both the horizontal and vertical field division for these displays. There's some visual quality issues with multi-monitor solutions. Dangerous Golf runs $20 on Steam and only has mixed reviews, and there's no demo available. Given the lack of display support and mixed reviews, we could only recommend this game on a steep discount. Next up is Total War Warhammer. It's the latest entry in the long-running Total War series from Creative Assembly. This entry takes place in the classic Warhammer universe and was released in May of 2016. It receives silver for all display types, widescreen, ultra-wide, multi-monitor, and 4K Ultra HD. The game offers native horizontal plus support across the board, but there are slight blemishes with each display type. These blemishes deal with full motion videos, background art on 2D screens, and the fact that the strategic overview, the campaign map, is vert minus. The game runs $60 on Steam and has mixed reviews. Most negative comments deal with the paid DLC and the overall value of the game for the price. The DLC, which many feel has essential content for the game, brings the total cost of the game to $100. Metacritic rates the game green with an aggregate score of 86 from professional reviewers, and I'm making air quotes as I say that. My recommendation is that if you're interested in the game and haven't picked it up yet, wait for a big sale or a Game of the Year edition. And here we have Medal of Honor Pacific Assault. It's the classic World War II FPS back from 2004. The game receives limited support for widescreen, ultra-wide, and multi-mon. It requires a hex edit and an INI &I edit, but results in horizontal plus gameplay. The HUD is spanned in multi-mon. The game isn't available on either Steam or GOG, but can be found on Amazon for less than 10 bucks. It's been well reviewed over the years, and if you're willing to do the hex edit, it could be worth the $10 to play an ultra wide or multi mon. Here we have Brothers in Arms Road to Hill 30. It is the uh, World War II FPS developed by Gearbox and released in 2005, and it's the first of the Brothers in Arms trilogy. It gets silver and widescreen and ultra wide. Multi mon has limited support. The game is vert minus out of the box and requires an INI edit for a horizontal plus field division. Multimon is knocked down to limited due to the fact that the cutscenes and weapons are barely visible. The game has very positive reviews on Steam and is available for $10 or as part of the $20 Brothers in Arm trilogy pack. And here we have Brothers in Arms Earned in Blood. It's the second entry in the trilogy. Like Road to Hill 30, it gets a silver for widescreen and ultra wide. Multimon also has limited support. It has the same solutions and issues as the first entry in the trilogy. Just like the first entry in the trilogy, it has very positive reviews on Steam, is available by itself for $10 or as part of the $20 trilogy. Here we have Inside. It's a horror side-scrolling puzzle adventure from the creator of Limbo. It was just recently released in July of 2016. It gets gold for widescreen and uh, 4K UHD. It has limited for ultra-wide and multi-mon. In full screen mode, the game is 16 by 10 anamorphic. Uh, your desktop aspect ratio is enforced. The game res is only designed to lower the pixel count and improve performance. In windowed mode, the game can be freely resized to any aspect ratio. Ultra wide and multi-mon require a hex edit for proper support and both uh, configurations still have a few blemishes. The game is $20 on Steam and has very positive reviews. Given the modest price and the great reviews, it's probably worth checking out and dealing with the custom fix, especially if you're a fan of the genre. And next up, we have Legend of K Anniversary. It is an action RPG adventure with puzzle and platforming elements. It was developed by Neon Studios and released in July of 2015. It's a remastered version of the original Legend of K, which was released 10 years prior back in 2005. The game gets silver for widescreen and ultra-wide, but limited for multi-mon. The game is vertical plus and widescreen, though the 16x9 aspect may be a little tight for some. It's horizontal plus and ultra wide, but also slightly vert minus. Multimon is also horizontal plus, but slightly more vert minus than ultra wide. The HUD grows in both ultra wide and multimon and begins to impact gameplay in multimon. The game has very positive reviews on Steam and is only 20 bucks. Unfortunately, there's no demo, so those with aspects wider than 16x9 could test first. We recommend the game to single screen users and would caution those with um, aspects wider than 16 by 9 to wait for a sale.
And finally, during the first two weeks of August, I released a video build log and review of my new Mini ITX rig. It's built around the EVGA Z170 Stinger motherboard and the EVGA Supernova 1050GS power supply, and it's built in the Corsair Obsidian 250D Mini ITX case. In the video, I go through the background of my part selection process, the build itself, including several issues I ran into, and a review of the motherboard, PSU, and case. I also include performance data covering the physical size, power draw, heat, noise, and gaming performance. This week's widescreen weekend review is sponsored by our very own WSGF Ultimate Monitor Stand. It's the only monitor stand on the market designed to grow with you and your gaming rig. It supports 3x1 landscape, 1 plus 3 landscape with up to 27 inch panels, and it also supports 5x1 portrait with up to 25 inch panels. For more information, visit wsgf.org stands.